lesson is on garden plants and flowers, and we're going to be color blending and mixing to create new values of color while we create garden plants. Now, the first step is to take your brush and to go ahead and give some stem area. We want to fill in some of this first. Give us some stem areas in order to paint, paint some flowers on top. Now you can do anything you want with this. Um, you know, you could turn it into a butterfly picture, you know, you could put snakes, bugs, whatever you want afterwards. But first we're going to give it a base um, and give some background color and, and plants. I take my brush, I load up, and I've loaded up into yellow first, and then I went into the green, and I'm going to start from the bottom, and I'm going to just make a few stems. And I'm going to load again. I'm just making a few stems at varying heights. You want to vary things. You don't want them all to be the same because you don't want it to be looking like it's a perfect row of something like that. You can tell that looks artificial. So we dip in and I want one really tall one. Go from top to bottom and then come back. If you miss some areas just come on back and bring it back down. Filling in. You want to continuously assess your painting to see where you need where you didn't do something right or where you need mistakes filled in. Like that stroke didn't quite get that, so I'm filling it in there. And then you want to add some types of leaves up the side. I'm just going to make it kind of like a fern type, or actually this is a piece of carrot stem or leaf, and I'm going to have it so that it's t smaller at the top and then wider at the bottom, um, sim similar to like a palm tree, a fern. So we're going to make that type of a garden plant. So I'm just going to fill in with some tiny starting tiny at the top, just tiny leaves coming off my stem here. And I don't even need to touch the stem, because when you're viewing these things from a distance in real life, sometimes you don't see the really tiny, tiny lines. Now I'm going to dip into some darker green as I go down my stem, just getting darker as I come down. And this just gives some foliage, some plant, some green plant life down here. And I'm going to put some more green on my brush and fill in. And I'm going to do the same for the other ones, just giving it a little bit of foliage here. Just real quick. And I have right here next to me, if you see, I've got three different values here. I've got medium green or almost a yellow green, yellow. Then I've got some dark green. And then actually I even have some turquoise blue here. And I'm using all of those colors in my plants because yellow and blue are part of green. So they'll mix together and our eye will mix them together to create different values of green. Right now I'm sticking in some turquoise on my dirty green brush and it's mixing for me, mixing into the green to give me some nice great blue-green color. I can even dip back and forth. Now notice, when I'm dipping, I'm not stirring in my paint. If I stirred my dirty brush into here, it could change this color. I'm just barely touching and pulling out. So it's not changing my blues and greens. If I were to take this really dirty brush though and stir it into my yellow, that's going to really contaminate that yellow. When I want to go back into yellow, I'm going to just wipe my brush right here and wipe off all the paint. You can use a napkin tissue or just go back and wash your brush in a bowl of water if you're going to go in um, to a yellow so that you have a, a pure yellow if you need it. I still have a dirty, you can see on my brush here, see? That's still showing some dirty yellow but at least I don't have a big puddle of this green with it. I'm just going to add some yellow in the background here. Now I'm going to go ahead, oh let me show you really quickly some grasses, grass blades. Uh, you never want to do, like I just showed you, the three straight lines. You can, for grass, if you're going to just fill in for, for filler down at the bottom, your grass blades are drawn from the bottom up at a curve. Crisscross the grass, loading up again, crisscross your grass, and making them vary in different heights. Some very short, crisscross every time you do it. Some to the left, some to the right, and do it very quickly. It's kind of like I'm flicking the paint. You want your paint to be kind of thin to do these types of grasses. Mine's a bit thick right now. There. So I'm filling in with some grasses, varying my height, varying the colors. I also need a little bit of dark, dark blue right here. So when I mix it, it'll turn dark green. Right in there. This is like a teal. There. That makes it really great green, blue green. All right. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and add some of my garden plants. This one right here is a zinnia. This here. And you can actually see the center. We've got the, um, the pistils are in the very center of the zinnia. And then around the edges, uh, you can see there is some filaments. And on the top of that filament is a stamen. A filament is this. It's the long stick of the flower. 
and on top is the little pollen area where the stamens are, right on the tips, tips of the filaments. Let me go ahead and uh, paint those in, and then we can add those. Um, I'm going to do my zinnias in red, so I'm going to place my brush, and I'm just going to press, and I'm going to place my brush here. It, it also helps, it helps probably if you start off with the little center. I'm going to give you a little center to go around. There, I just put a little yellow center in. So then I can press down with my brush. My, now my tip is facing uh, and barely touching the yellow. Then I can press over. So I've gone side, side, down. Now I'm just going to fill in the edges. One, two. Now that is a side view of a zinnia right here, if you look. Or, a, or actually, no, I'm sorry, these are cosmos. So that's actually a side view of the cosmo. That's like you can't see the other petals. Okay, if you want to do a full view of that, and you want to vary this, you don't want to have them all the same. So I'll do a full view right here, like it's tipping toward me. Place your center, and then you're going to do the same. Press, press, press. You gotta turn, sometimes you've got to turn your body. Press, and then I'm just pressing in here. Now if you double dipped your brush, I can dip in a little bit of purple. I can end up with some purple value even. Purple and... That wasn't a good angle. The purples and reds. So I'll show you again down here. And vary the height. Some short, some low. I'll do another one right in here. Dot. Then if you want to double dip, and you can double dip in, say, light pink, dark pink. I just happen to have purple and magenta with me. So I can press. There you can see the two tones. Press, press. Sometimes even if you turn your page, if you have trouble turning it so that it's facing you. Press, press, press. I'm going to turn around. Press, press. And I've got my two tones. Okay, so that's up to you. Sometimes you like that look, sometimes you want it solid. You know, a solid look to it. Depending on the actual flower that you're trying to make. Um, when that dries, if you really want to add fancy detail, and I do this with markers, is you can add the little stamens and, and filaments and the center pistols if you want later or little tiny sometimes they're just drawn as little tiny dots actually because you don't see here's some at the top here you don't see much of that especially on a side view one then you can even draw right here draw with a marker to get that but that's just like the little things sticking up in the back in the air um, another type of flower that's really fun and easy to do is like a stock flower it's made from, you take a, it's a stem, and the flowers actually grow al along the whole edge of the stalk. So then I can do another, I'll just do two here. Dipping in, and I'll, I'll make this a purple one, so I'll double dip. I'll go into dark purple, light purple. So two tones. You can see there's two tones on my brush. And I'm going to start very tiny dots at the top, and then I'm going to kind of go one on each side. And dabbing, dab, 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 and press my brush, and I'm getting bigger as I go down the side. It's important to also go on top of the. Now I dipped in some light purple right now, and it's important to go on top of the stalk as well, the green part. And dab, 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 and these are tall flowers that grow off of a stem, and it's made up of multiple clusters, lots of little flowers growing up. These look gorgeous in flower arrangements or flower paintings or wildflower paintings. Um, doing dab, dab, dab on both sides. This is dark purple. This is one, another way to do it. Then go into light purple and go back in between and fill in with some light purples. So just by dabbing color. But it's important to remember, really tiny and skinny at the top. And then you're just getting a little bit bigger and pressing the brush as you go down. And I would balance it off with another flower on this side, too. But this is the basics of doing garden flowering, and you can arrange them the way you want. You can use different colors. Um, here's, here's another flower here. You can see these bright reds. This is in a cluster, too, these cluster flowers. If you're going to do something like that, say this is the stem, the stalk. You see that? That's not a mistake anymore. Then I can just do little tiny flowers here, little tiny clusters coming off of my stem, and that would be this flower, just little tiny clusters. And I'm not actually painting the flowers and the petals. I'm just kind of doing dabs of paint. And then I can even go back in if I want to and paint these stem lines. Actually, the stems almost look like a dark red in here, too. So I can stick the stems in and connect it to a plant right there. So that's something like this plant here. 
Um, 